There are thousands and thousands of people out here. People are upset, they're angry, they're fed up. Para defender los derechos de la mujer y para defender que se les haga justicia a las víctimas de feminicidio. Ten women per day, on average, were murdered in Mexico in 2019. ¿Quién fue el que la mató? ¿En qué momento decidieron acabar con ella? ¡Ni una más! ¡Ni una más! ¡Ni una asesinada más! In Mexico, women are protesting the rise in femicides, the killing of women because of their gender. It is the most extreme form of violence and discrimination against women and girls under Mexican law. So I think sometimes when you're talking about these issues in terms of statistics, it's easy to forget, I think, that there's individual stories here, that there's individual pain. And so we're going to go talk to a family right now whose entire lives have just been destroyed by the issue of femicide. Muchísimo recuerdo. Trato de, de, de no recordarla porque sé que cuando la recuerdo pues me duele demasiado. Pero pues ella era una chica, lo que le gustaba mucho era leer. Diana cuando fue asesinada tenía 24 años. De hecho hoy era su cumpleaños. 4 de marzo era su cumpleaños. Hoy estaría cumpliendo 20, 27 años. No le puedo explicar cómo es este, este sentimiento que tiene uno como madre de saber que ya nunca va a volver a ver a su hija. ¿Quién fue el que la mató? ¿Qué le dijeron en los últimos momentos de su vida? ¿En qué momento decidieron acabar con ella? ¿Qué ella fue lo que dijo? Si sí, lloró. Es que ustedes no se pueden imaginar todo ese dolor, todo lo que yo siento, todas esas preguntas sin respuestas. Es que no hay ninguna respuesta. Las autoridades no han hecho absolutamente nada para buscar al responsable. Y yo me sigo preguntando todos los días. A todas horas, a todos, en todos los momentos, en dónde está el asesino, en dónde está, por qué no lo encuentran. So what that says is basically no forgiving, no forgetting justice for Diana Velázquez Lorenzo. On February 9th, police found 25-year-old Ingrid Escamilla dead at a Mexico City home. Her body was skinned and she was missing organs. Several outlets published pictures of her mutilated corpse, causing uproar. Two days after Ingrid was found, seven-year-old Fatima was last seen alive with an unknown woman. She was later found dead, her body inside a plastic bag. Cecilia. Protesters are not just angry at local law enforcement. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador's response has faced heavy criticism as he's blamed the rise of femicides on past governments. Fue un proceso de degradación progresivo que tuvo que ver con el modelo neoliberal. So there are thousands and thousands of people out here, and I think that that speaks to the urgency of this moment. People are upset, they're angry, they're fed up. But it's not just femicide, it's also just general violence against women. You know, this country and the women in this country will tell you that they often feel for, for generations, they've been looked at as second-class citizens. And as a result, they've experienced lots of violence, you know, against them. And they want to change that. Para defender los derechos de la mujer y para defender que se les haga justicia a las víctimas de feminicidio. Me uno a las, a las demandas de las mujeres y me, solar, me, me solidarizo con ellas.
In February, lawmakers voted to increase the minimum penalty for femicide crimes from 40 to 45 years and the maximum penalty from 60 to 65 years. They also increased penalties for sexual abuses of minors. The reforms are expected to be ratified in the Senate. But until the femicides stop, Lydia Florencio will continue to march for her daughter and for everyone else's. Por todas esas autoridades indolentes, omisas, ineptas. Hoy recorremos de nuevo las calles del centro de la ciudad para exigir al gobierno federal que de veras tome en serio esta violencia de género que se está viviendo en todo México. If a disease breaks out anywhere in the world, the Epidemic Intelligence Service, or EIS, is called in to investigate the outbreak. A lot of people uh, refer to EIS as the disease detectives because we are the ones sent out during outbreak or emergency response situations. The elite team works quickly to figure out who is sick, the origin of the infection, and how to stop it from spreading. I'm Caitlin Kassaboom. I'm a second year Epidemic Intelligence Service Officer at the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. My first outbreak was an anthrax outbreak in wildlife in Namibia. Over 200 hippos and Cape buffalo died. Over a thousand people were exposed to the carcasses. We assisted Namibia with control efforts in order to prevent future infections. Today, Caitlin has been deployed here, on St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. In September 2017, the islands were hit by two major hurricanes. In the aftermath, several people fell sick to a bacterial disease called leptospirosis, the first time it was seen on the islands. The local health department needed backup, so they called in the disease detectives. Leptospirosis, or lepto, is a bacterial disease spread through the urine of infected animals. If there's flooding or rain, humans could have contact with water that has been contaminated. The symptoms of lepto are flu-like illness, but people that get a very serious infection, it can be fatal. We have 14 people from CDC that are down here for this, as well as at least 25 local volunteers. We're gonna go back to the block that we were in yesterday. Um, yeah, so it'll be pretty quick. Once the team has their map assignments, the detective work begins. We start going door to door with the primary goal of educating people on the disease. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Mike. We ask them if they would be willing to take a survey. We take a small amount of blood so that we can test and see if they've been exposed to lepto. The lab takes a specimen, they'll centrifuge um, or spin down the specimens, and then they'll store those for freezing to be eventually mailed back to CDC in Atlanta for the testing. What we're really hoping is that the Department of Health can use that information when paired with the survey data to identify risk factors for exposures. I have a training in animal diseases and being able to apply that to help humans is kind of the best of both worlds. You're doing something that is actively preventing people from getting sick with really serious diseases. Being out there and doing that and interacting with people and, you know, making that difference, it's been a great experience. <laughs>